I didn't even do my hair. I don't have my eyeliner on. I'm not in the environment to do an interview with a camera pointing at me. I'm me. No. <laughs> this is my work clothes. <laughs> Conceptually, what's the album about? It's a concept album. It is indeed. It is about the, the, the incredible story of Mr. Birch. So what, what specifically about a circus? I mean, is it just you're trying to replicate the feel or is there actually That's a storyline? That's a lot of it, yeah. The storyline, um, as of right now, the book has yet to be written. <laughs> but, because, uh, 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 you know, it's hard to put an entire story into songs. There's only so many. It really does better than conveying just a story of words is it conveys emotions and feelings. So, really, as of right now, the incredible story of Mr. Birch is a story of feelings and emotions. Birch singing a song, he's kind of um, a little more of a con artist type. If you're thinking of allegories like C.S. Lewis, he'd be the white witch. Oh, when we say ours is locked the circus, it's because you get the feeling of the yeah. circus. You feel yeah. the sound. You feel the and smell the hay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. This, this is something that also is a good focus that we've been pushing, is that it's a concept album. A lot of people nowadays aren't doing a concept album. They're doing the one song that gets get on that. Grey's Anatomy, that gets really huge, and then you know, people not, you know discover the band. Not that we. But just from a very practical level, how how do you guys begin the whole songwriting craft? You know, it's it's just a little different every time. This one was it was a lot easier to write the song, what songs once we had kind of a theme going. Well, who so. like to even go more bass? Who who begin? Do you begin the songs? I do. I do a lot. Most of the beginnings, yeah. And then you bring. It to the group and everyone fills in and adds and so on and so forth. Yeah, exactly. It depends. Last, it's I don't, I've never really found a method for songwriting. It'll be sometimes I'll just kind of plop out. Sometimes I'll be up at four because I just want to finish a song. But you never know what's really what's gonna happen. I really I wish I could give more of a method to people who ask me, but I just I don't have it, which makes it kind of more exciting. It's always like a, an adventure. I wrote a song once. <laughs> oh, me too. It's overrated. So, but this this album kind of once we knew the feel we were going for, which actually started the very first song that started this whole thing was Mr. Birch. So, we wrote so this Mr. Song Birch gave the feel that you exactly. That you, it was a little bit out there, and then everything. It's like, wow, we should kind of go with this. And so, kind of gathered some resources, lots of Dumbo, Pinocchio, a lot of, because, you know, Disney did do it. I know we're always going back to Disney, but they did a very good job capturing. Mm -hmm. but especially Absolutely. back then with those original movies, they did a very good job capturing just the feeling. With the music. With the and so, world. with music, just you felt, you felt the emotions of when you watch that movies. I don't know, I cried when Bambi's mom died. So, you know, we kind of drew on that and then we just knew all the songs we wanted to draw upon that feeling and so thus came together the, song, the story of Mr. Birch. We had, we just to get an idea of like, okay, this has a feeling that we're going for. What lyrically kind of feeling would it have? How would you describe your sound? Uh, I would call it pop rock. That's how we if we have to pick a genre, that's the one we choose. Choose over like art rock or. Um, people don't really understand rock. what art rock is. They kind of think like, oh, they mean they're like hippies in the dress. So style. when we call it pop rock, they're like, oh, maybe they're kind of like Michael Jackson, and they love Michael Jackson. So. <laughs> Who's and they? You guys love Widow's <laughs> Might. <laughs> yes, Widow's Might. Talk, let's talk a little bit about your influences. Okay, now. no, no, no. I, I, I can attest that I was inspired. We're like an elegant swan. Which, yes, a swan can fly, yes, they can be aggressive, yet they're elegant and they can just perch themselves upon the water. Elegant swan can fly but defends their territory when needed. I like this.
<laughs> so who were some of your musical influences? I mean, on a serious note. On a serious note. On a very serious note. Tom Waits. Definitely. Guys, that's all I need to hear. Tom Waits. <laughs> there is. We, a, yes, Tom Waits. Tom, Tom Waits. Though he was later on in life, we discovered the Tom. Yeah, that came from Europe that's also been influenced. They're, um, the Beats, the Beat. <laughs> the Beatles. and the Whale. Noah, very large yeah. influence. Noah and the actual. Whale. Noah and the Whale. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. He had actually a large influence on us. He's, um, he was, he's a good, very, very talented man. Yeah. Weird, for sure, but talented. Dickens, for me, <laughs> surpasses all others. Because he actually influenced a lot of what I try to do in music, is what Charles Dickens does in books. In that, he, when he writes a book, he makes you feel that you're there, that you're in the story, even part of the story. And that's what we really try to do with our music. Is we try to make you feel that you're part of the music. You, you're in the middle of the circus and you see what's going on. You feel the emotions of the people who are singing the songs. It's like a good movie. The shit. Movies, okay, what movies do you like? Oh, Disney. Oh, so many good movies. Like I, of course, love all the Disney movies, all the Pixar. Pixar, yes. like, they've Pixar. never made a bad movie. Big on production, though, too, like, good production. You know, I love the prestige, I love the illusionist, I love... Mm -hmm. That had a lot of influence on the feel of this album, actually, because it's the same kind of time. Just very today, I was wondering what the Native Americans ever did for sports. Like, what was their sport? You want Peyote to know buttons. What is it? Lacrosse. Lacrosse? <laughs> Lacrosse was invented by Native Americans. Oh, really? No, I know. That's you answered the. Disney World when we were in Florida. You Some sure people. are, Mr. Disney. Let we us love in. it. Oh. We went to Epcot, and my favorite thing of the entire day, we went all over Disney World. My favorite thing was that all the different war the different areas of the world. That's yeah. my favorite. Germany by far. was the best place. Yeah, definitely. Germany. Strudels and Guten Tag. They have, they, and the cool thing about it is they bring people in from other parts of the world. Yeah. I so watched some guy language. order beer from a real German girl. Yeah. She said, here's oh, here's A real spot. German girl. She was wow. real. She had an accent and everything. Yeah. And they all were <laughs> all dressed in like little hosen uh, yeah, Like, for example, Disney, what brings people back is the, the, the experience. They enter a world. It's completely isolated. Even in the middle of Anaheim, California, one of the most populated places in this nation that you can enter into a, like you're you're in a complete you're not in the middle of Anaheim you're not in Orange County you're in you're in Disneyland you're in this, this new environment it's a whole new and world. they don't anchor their draw by one particular thing like their rides people just go there for their rides because people get season passes and they go there just to hang out so it's not like they, they have these amazing rides where it's like oh we go but we go there strictly for the rides they go there because it's like an experience every time you go there you're, you're escaping somewhere else and so that's what we want this album to do when people you know put it on their iPod, they put their headphones in. It's, you know, they're escaping to something else and they can relate to it, just like you can relate to parts of Disneyland. They can, you know. So Last thing, this has been really fun. Let's take it off. <laughs> Talk about your uh, your faith. Uh, how, how does this album relate to your Christian faith? Um, it really just, uh, it really comes through just in, uh, we you know, we're all Christians, we all love the Lord, and that comes through in everything we do. And especially what we write and what we do musically, and so um, it has. Uh, it really does. Like we were mentioning, Chronicles of Narnia earlier, or Lord of the Rings. It has a lot of those um, underlying experiences. It's not necessarily just a straightforward Christian story per se, right. but it, it does have a lot to do with it. You know, you look at Mr. Birch, and um, he would obviously be the, the staging figure. You know, you know. Hard to, it's, it's not necessarily something where, where you can say, well, this is this in Christianity, this is this, this is that, you know. It's a little, Lord of the Rings, is, it's more like Lord of the Rings, I guess, than Carlos of Narnia. It's not like a direct parallel of the Bible, either. <laughs> so we're on iTunes everywhere across the world, and getting, you know, slowly to everything else, all, all, the, dis all the digital distribution such as Amazon.com, all those places that the album will slowly be on so people can get a hold of it. So it's being available for the people right. and having them talk about us and spread the word. Sailed across that bay The ship a creature lost beneath the